Okay. Let me like let me get set up here. <clears throat> Case study discussion. So should we have a prayer first? Sure, I'll say it. Yeah, Father, we're grateful this day, grateful for the opportunity to have this discussion as a group and to negotiate a deal. I see that we can learn and understand more about the business world in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I guess you still can't hear. Still can hear. Yeah, I'm here. Well, okay. <laughs> still uh, praying. Praying. I couldn't hear that at the end, and then you said, "Can I hear?" And I'm like, "Oh, he must have." <laughs> Amen. Yes, Lord, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, what happened in your negotiations? I need to negotiate first. Yeah, we have to do a bunch first. We have to do what? We have to negotiate first before we can answer any of these questions. Okay. <laughs> Who wants to get started? Do you guys want to kick it off? Andrew and Sarah? Sure. Andrew? <laughs> Um, let's see. So, clearly what we're negotiating is whether or not you guys will um, do a contract with us to help us finish developing our Curex system. I don't accept those terms. Just keep going. But, so, okay, I probably shouldn't prepare more for our negotiation because you probably shouldn't ask your other company that you're negotiating advice. But, what, I don't, I don't really understand what we're trying to get from them, Sarah. <laughs> Just so exclusive rights. Exclusive rights, and we want them to. We want a licensing partnership. So, their company they'll do most of the work. Is who's going to put the coffee in our Keurig system? Uh, Wait, okay. we're we're green the Green Mountain one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, so I thought it was just like we're just like negotiating, like it said at the end of the thing. Like how much you guys are gonna get for the royalty fee? Like who's gonna pay for the packaging lines? And like what you guys were saying with the exclusive, like the exclusive rights thing. Yeah. So how much would you guys want as a royalty fee? All of it. All of it. <laughs> Because so looking at the case, this is what I thought. So, um, people like the businesses were willing to pay like twenty five cents per little cake cup or whatever, <clears throat> and it costs um, twelve cents to make it, and then it would cost Green Mountain about two cents to ship it out. That leaves eleven cents the profit from the each K cup, and so just depending on who pays for the packaging line depends on how much the royalty fee would be. I would think because whoever pays for the packaging line would deserves more of the profit because they're paying for that. So I'd say if if we decided to pay for the packaging, 
would give you a th like a three cent royalty fee. Um, that would provide us with just about enough to cover um, the the packaging line cost every year and make a profit still. So. So the packaging cost was in that twelve cents, right? I'm pretty sure it just costs twelve cents to make it, then an extra two cents to ship it out. Okay. So Kurt anticipated that the direct cost for the coffee packaging materials and product production line would be thirteen cents. So thirteen cents would cover coffee packaging materials and. It go ahead. Be fourteen. Okay. And so it would be like eight cents to you guys and three to us. Yeah. Oh, screw you, greedy people. <laughs> Sheesh. Well, they gave you more information than they gave us because they didn't give us costs or anything. Cost was in the case study, wasn't it? You have a different case study than us. Yeah. The cost of what? All those, all those numbers you just said weren't in our information. What case study do you have? The actual case part, like on the prep assignment, if you go to the actual case study. Oh. What? Well, that would have helped. From the actual case study, Lazarus was considering alternatives to the founder's original plan to sell the True North cups. Under the True North plan, Kerry would purchase the coffee from a premium roaster under a private label arrangement. Kerry produced the True North branded K cups in its own facility on a packaging line, expecting to cost seven hundred thousand and have five year depreciated life, depreciation life. Annual output from each packaging line would support 1,500 brewers. Cure anticipated the true, the direct cost for the coffee, packaging materials, and production line to be 13 cents per True North cup. So it sounded like that's if they went through their own route, right? Would be 15, would be 13 cents to them. <clears throat> Is that correct? Is that what you understand it to be? So it'd be 10 cents for what? Keurig anticipated that the direct cost for coffee packaging materials and production line would be 13 cents per True North K cup, which did not include the amortized amortization of packaging line equipment. If, as if, if they were to do everything on their own, like, from a it on their own, make the actual coffee makers on their own, it would cost them 13 cents to make each packet, like each K cup. If the other part of it is if they were to make a deal with Green Mountain, it would only cost 12 cents to make each cup, and it would only cost two cents to ship it. Yeah, Curd would receive a per cup royalty and licenses such as Green Mountain uh, would incur all direct costs expect, expected to average 12 cents per cup. So through, for a licensing deal, they Okay, I got gotcha. you. So we give you, you do everything pretty much, but we just get the royalty of the three cents for having our system and our product, but you guys just use it and everything? Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, this would have been nice to actually read the case study. All I read was our... Did you get... Yeah, I can see how that would happen because he just posted the two things on the announcement things, and he never said anything about the actual case study, so... So we already bought the equipment, didn't we, Sarah? 
Um, hold on, I'm going right back to my notes here real quick. When's the end of the semester again? Oh, like five days. I'm so excited. Maybe seven days. Oh, no, that's expected. So that was with a different yeah, that's... plan. Okay, but then we should probably see how we can make more if it's worth having our own coffee brand. All right. Okay. We're going to hit a reset, the reset button and start anew. Yeah. So what's the first question? Royalty per cup, how much? I want three cents. No, we want more. <laughs> Four and a half cents. Four and a half cents. I'm thinking of one and a half. <laughs> I think I'm dealing with Braden. <laughs> I'm with Jason. We can meet in the middle at half. three. <laughs> Would you guys come up to four? So here's my logic for three, okay? So each each year we're going to experience $150,000 in depreciation expense with the equipment the packaging equipment and so what it each um each office manager that buys one of these um coffee makers in the K-cups they burn through 34 little cups a day. There's 250 work days. So that's 8,500 cups. And so we're going, if we give you guys a, a three cent royalty fee, that would leave us with eight cents. And so we make eight cents off of each of those. And so that would leave us with like $680. Um, a year for each office that is buying these K-Cups. And so in order to, like, I guess before we start giving bigger royalty fees, we'd want to see the actual of how many offices would buy the coffee makers. Because at that rate, it would probably take like, um, let me see, let me see how many offices would have to use the coffee maker in order for us to like make a return on our investment. So just to make a return about 220, like 220 offices would have to be using the K cups. And that's just to make like to break even for us. And so the intel see that a lot of people are buying it and that it's successful that take the three percent royalty fee if it gets like if you guys start getting bigger more people start buying then we can hire that royalty fee raise the royalty fee you mean so depending on the results so, Brandon, where do you want us to start with? Like, what do we want to offer? 
Yeah, I mean, like, so you do you think three cents is fair right now, or do you think that's not enough? Or too much? Um, I, think, I think three cents is probably fair. And it could go up to something more after so many units or after there's been so much volume. Yeah. So can we write that into the contract that at a certain level we'll, we'll raise it? I'll have to have my uh, attorneys review the contract. <laughs> but I suppose we could do that. Who pays for packaging lines? Well, with this, you guys would. Yeah. So can we raise it? What are you willing to raise it to after a certain level? Well, uh, depends. Because, see, you guys are going to be mo making most of your money off the actual brewers. And so we'd strictly be making money off of the K-Cups. So I'd maybe like maybe eventually like one or two cents. So can we do four and a half yes. cents? Yeah. Probably good. And would that be you said to break even to something? So can we raise it to four and a half at like five hundred? Uh, five hundred. How about if we ever reached seven hundred, we'd raise it up to that. Bingo. That, that would be yeah. he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Andrew, what do you think? Andrew, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I was talking, sorry, I forgot I was on mute. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out if we do the True North K-Cup and just do everything ourselves. I mean, I'm sure we would make more, but it's a lot more work. I don't know if it'd be worth the extra time, and then we'd have to find our investors and do it through that way because our VC firm's not going to give us any more, and... So I think it'd just be easier to do it with them. And like you said, our main thing is through the brewer, like the actual like product and not the K-Cup. Right. Yeah, you don't want to do it yourself. It's the worst idea you've brought up. <laughs> yeah. So if we start well, it. How, how much, when would the, our price go up to four and a half cents? Is there like a certain amount of stores that have to be using it until that goes up, or is it more of a timeline that you guys are looking at? It's like no. seven seven hundred different offices would have to be using it. No. Sure. Seven hundred. Yeah. You know, if Green Mountain doesn't make that much money, I'm not that emotionally invested. So. <laughs> All right, so we got we got a deal on those two. Okay, so the next question I have for you, and I want you to think about this: What if Green Mountain wants exclusivity? I think there would have to be in place like your growth because <coughs> right now I think our thing said you don't have like a huge market that you guys are in right now. We're pretty big time. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Well, the next question is, what if Green Mountain wants equity in Keurig? So, we want exclusivity and we want equity in your company. We want it for free. For a lot. So, what would be something we would have to give up in order to do that? Uh, let me think about it. I think I would say give up the exclusivity if you want some equity. So, do we just take one or the other? Yeah. What do you think, Andrew? I mean, that would make sense because if you don't have the exclusivity, then we probably branch out and get more contracts and things like that. And so we'd make more money, but you have equity in it. So you're still seeing more profit because of the equity. Yeah. The thing. But okay. How about this? We'll provide a one year, a one year exclusivity contract. And if after a year you want to go and go elsewhere, we'll raise the premium by one cent. Otherwise, if you guys, in order to keep the exclusivity in place after a year, we'll raise it up a cent. So if it's not profitable for us, then you guys can go elsewhere. We work out some of the, like an arrangement like that. So if we were at 3%, you'd want to take another cent out of that? No, I'm saying we want exclusivity for at least one year at three cents. If we want exclusivity to extend beyond a year, we'll raise it to four. Okay. So in other words, we have to pay more. <coughs> we want it for at least a year based on current terms. If we want it to be, if we want exclusivity to go beyond a year, then we'll give you an increase in the royalty. And if things don't work out with the being exclusive, then we at least like a little bit of equity. Okay. After we go elsewhere, like to if a bigger like if it's really successful and a bigger company like you're saying if Procter Gamble or someone like that came in, we probably wouldn't make a whole ton of money from it and so we'd want some equity. All right. So if um if we do keep it after a year and we go up to four per four cents, would that also raise it to five and a half cents after 700 offices. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if we, here's the thing. If we decide, you know, we get to decide, I guess what I'm saying is we get to decide if after a year we want to go up to, uh, to have an exclusive deal. If we decide to go the exclusive route in exchange for that, we'll give you a one cent increase. So it'll go from three to four. Okay. Okay, so if you don't want to something up for that. us. What's that? And if you don't, if it's not working out, then we switch to the equity instead of the case. Right. We have an equity option, yeah. Cool. And how much equity? 51%. <laughs> We've already lost 75% of our company. Yeah. Then it's completely Well, that is a question I don't have the answer to. I don't know. We'll have like a, say we'll have a right to buy in at like 10% based on a third party's independent evaluation of value or something. Okay. Does that seem okay? I don't know. I feel like ten percent is a lot, but I don't know the numbers. But sure. How about we negotiate that at the time, and it can't go higher than ten percent? That's uh, fine. In the value, we can look to being a. Uh, 
you know, the value we'll look at is could be decided by an independent third party. Okay. We would just give you the equity. No, they'd buy it in. Buy in it. We'd have a right to buy. It's an option. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Cool. Okay. Well, I feel like we got screwed on this arrangement. You guys won. <laughs> If both oh, sides feel like the whole time. Then. Secretly, we knew all the numbers and stuff. We were just playing yeah. the empathy card and, and yeah, just, just getting all your money. So. If if both sides feel like they got hosts, then actually, it's probably a fair deal. <coughs> um. Okay. Any other questions? Now we have to go through those post negotiation questions, right? Oh yeah. Dang it. I was thinking we were gonna be done here soon. I was excited. So all right, let me get the questions. What happened in your negotiation? What was the tone of your negotiations? It was contentious. No, I thought it was fine. <laughs> okay, anybody add anything to that or are we just gonna leave it fine? Okay, fine it is. What actions did your counterpart, did your counterparty take that were particularly effective? Um, Braden was really good at explaining where he got his numbers and why they, why they worked. That helped. Yeah, I think that was really good. Props to him, he did really good at that. Made up everything. <laughs> we would never have known it. Okay, so I think he did a really good job in explaining numbers. I think you guys did a good job with uh, the whole not letting us take both equity and exclusive rights. So that was a good move. Yeah, that was good. I bet Andrew did really good in providing his sustain support <laughs> and was agreed upon. Okay, did you walk through per cup economic analysis? I think we did. Yeah. And what major points of disagreement did you encounter? Um, I don't think we encountered any, any because Braden knew his crap. He knew the numbers and you guys couldn't question it. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> How important is the negotiation to Keurig? What is at stake? I think the negotiation is huge. I mean, this the profitability of their company and the direction that they go is really at stake here. They have to make a good deal. Well, also, I don't know if it was in the main case, but it was saying like, so we only have seven hundred thousand dollars left in like our bank account. And we have a burn rate each month of I think it was like sixty thousand, and so it was really important. And our venture capital firm wasn't going to uh, loan us any more to get going, and so yeah, it was extremely important to have this deal go through or completely change everything. And so it was kind of urgent that we got a deal or just book or stop the whole thing because we were running out of money. Yeah, I think I think both parties were kind of equally as a. Uh, I mean, it was it was more important to Keurig, but with uh, Green Mountain, it was saying in our thing. I don't know if this was in the regular case study either, but it was saying that um, we really didn't have like 
currently in like the best position to start investing more in other things because we just invested in like increasing the sales force um, to increase revenue and we'd have to raise more money and that just wasn't really in the plans and so in order for green mountain to do it and to actually provide like the packaging and stuff they would actually need like a good return to show for it especially since they're like a, they're a publicly traded company so they have to answer to people i mean so does keurig but yeah um how did you view keurig's position i don't think they had a ton of leverage i think the leverage is mostly with us because you know no i guess there's some, there's some leverage with both but keurig's position i think is a little bit um weakened by as you pointed out there's only so much money that you guys had to draw from Is there anything to add to that? Yeah, we were kind of up against a wall. Well, we had a couple options, but we needed the money. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Okay. How important is it to GMCR? I mean, I think for us, the importance is to, it's going to increase volume significantly. So it gives us an opportunity where we can make some additional money, but also increase our volume. So I think it's important for us as well. Anything you add to that? Can I get a lip check? Is this thing working? Is this on? Yeah. Okay. We're all blown away sure. by your input, so you have nothing to say. <laughs> What's that? I said we're all just so blown away by your input that we're speechless. Oh, if only my kids would feel that way. <laughs> okay. What is the maximum value that could be shared between GMCR and Keurig? Go. Mm -hmm. Are they talking dollar value or just? I, I, I guess, I don't know. What do you think? Well. I don't know how you can calculate that because it's like, what if they have like, you don't know how much revenue they're going to get, so you can't like share a specific yeah. dollar. Something. Yeah, I would just say, sorry, talking to my kid. Um, At some point, it's not profitable for us, and at some point, it's not profitable for you guys. So we have to find common ground because there's there's only so much we can give and only so much you guys can give in, other, in order for it to be worth each other's time. I think we find, kind of found that sweet spot of maybe 3%. Anything else? Okay. How much does Keurig earn under True North? So I didn't run the numbers on that, but um, it does say it would definitely be less than what we would do with you guys. Yeah, I mean it would be third. The cost would be thirteen cents under True North K cups, and then that's not even including some of the others like the depreciation of packaging. The um, wow. 
So yeah, there would be there would be other costs. I think the part yeah. we don't understand is how much they earn would be in terms of what is the revenue. So in ours, it said. Uh, cost per cup would probably higher in total or yeah the cost per cup would probably be higher and the total revenue would be lower under the true north plan compared to costs and revenues for roasters under the license plan there you go okay we'll go with that what is keurig's walk away and what is green mountain's walk away I think we would have walked away if you wanted both equity and exclusivity. And I think we would walk away at some point if there's not enough in, if there's too much paid in royalties where it doesn't, we can't do this for, we're not a charitable institution. We need to do it to make money. So I think if the, if the arrangement was such that we didn't make money, and I think when you're into that, you know, Five percent, or you know, four and a half, five percent, or more, depending on volume, then it becomes not worth it for us to do that. How did you get those values? I mean, that's just the math behind Braden's numbers. He's a uh, he's an accounting genius, so he figured that out. What is Zupa? That's the next question. We've talked about Zupa before, but it's been a while. I tried to Google it, but I can't find any. Cafe Zupa makes house-made fresh soups and salads. That's probably not the one we're looking for. <laughs> um, Zupa. Um, There's a there's a map. Zupa says current position. And there's a circle. It's current position, future position, proof of substance, and then you have under current position you have market target group needs. Under proof of substance you have product offer service, tools and utilities, contract sales and service, marketing. So it's apparently it's a brand model. Something like that. I don't know. This is from some website I found on the internet. Who the heck knows? Okay, moving on. How big a deal of exclusive is? How big of a deal is exclusivity to both parties? Well, I think like we talked about, it could be good for both of us or it could be bad for both of us, just depending on how the coffee does in the Keurig type of thing. Yeah, I would add, I think we feel like an exclusivity agreement is necessary in like the early on. So we're going to do this. We want to know that it works. We want, we're willing to do this with you. And then as we, as time goes on, I mean, if we want an exclusivity, we have to be willing to pay more. Or we have to, there has to be some give and take. It's going to cost us something to have enter into that arrangement, which I think is re reasonable. I think it definitely has a better, I guess, potential for you guys, though, just because we're a national, I don't know. I feel like 
your brand could be a lot more benefited than ours just because your product is getting shipped to whoever we make the deals with type of thing. While if we have just your exclusive coffee, then it's, I mean, it's convenient, but I don't think there's much we really gain out of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. We benefit more probably. I agree with that. Have we captured a complete picture of both parties' interests? I think so. What say you? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Do we feel like we've completed the case study to everyone's satisfaction? I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Mm hmm? Brayden, you're on mute. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Same. All right. Then I think we're done. What do we have to do to write this one up this week? Is it? I think it might not be the same thing as normal. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, who's doing what? I, I can't remember what I did last week. It. Yeah, I don't remember what I did either. It was so long ago. <laughs> I can't remember what I had for dinner last night. Um, I can do the calculation. Yes. Okay. Oh, so it looked like I did one and two last week, which would mean I do three and four this week. I think I did, um, I'll do seven, eight, nine. All right. Well, if you're okay doing the the numbers, Brayden, I can do the three and four then. Okay, awesome. So, Andrew, are you doing one and two then? One and two, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Seven, eight, okay. I think this is our last one because it looks like the case study next week we have to do by ourselves. Last one. Yes. <laughs> Good knowing all of you. Okay, anything else? I don't think so. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, guys. Send uh, send everyone else your work, I guess, and enjoy conference in a few minutes. Awesome. All right. Okay. Thanks. See you, See you guys. Bye. Bye.